Hi, this is Mike with the Wizard of Odds. In my last video, I showed you how you can create the Blackjack basic strategy starting with just a blank spreadsheet, uh, which is in front of me right now. And in this second part, I'm going to show you how to go from here to getting a house advantage in Blackjack. So I already know the expected amount the player is going to win or lose for any hand. Now all I need to do is find the probability of any starting hand and then multiply those probabilities by the expected values and finally make an adjustment uh, for the dealer having a blackjack um, to begin with. So let's start with a page. Let's call it um, prob for probability. This will stand for the probability of every possible starting hand. So the player could start with anything um, from a 5 um, up to a 21 or a blackjack. Um, he could have a soft, anything from a 13 to um, um, a blackjack. So with the hard total, we'll, we'll put the um, blackjacks with the soft totals. And there, there's the possible split. So we'll say a pair from two up to ten, and then the aces. And of course, we do everything according to the dealer's up card. All right. The player's first card could be a two through an ace. As well as the second card. So let's find the um, how often each possible sum occurs. So not counting the aces, this table shows um, the total for every combination of, of the first card and the second card. I'm going to get rid of the uh, pairs because I treat those separately because the player can split those. All right. So here's all the possible um, hard totals. And in this column, I'm going to indicate the probability of each one as seen by how often they occur in this table up here. So I'm going to use the sum if function, which I use all the time. Um, wait, it's a little premature to do that. Okay, here's a similar table. I'm going to make another table that shows the probability of each total. So in most cases, it's just 1 in 13 times 1 in 13 when there's no 10 involved. When there's a 10 involved, it's um, 1 in 13 times 4 in 13. Okay, now we're ready. Equal sum if, and we're searching through this table for this number, and when we find it, we sum up these numbers. And I have to put in the dollar sign so when I copy and paste this, the range will stay the same of the two uh, matrices. Well, let me make this bigger for you guys because you probably can't see it very well. Sorry about that. Okay. So here we've got the probability of each player hard total from 5 up to 19.
So up here, I'm pretty much doing the same thing, but across the dealer total. In fact, I don't even need to bother. So I can simply say for the hard five, for example, is refer to my table down here, and then times one and 13 for the dealer up card of a two. And I'm gonna take away this 20 because I deal with that with the pairs. Okay, for a dealer up card of 10, I do the same thing, but I multiply by four, by four divided by 13 because there's four 10-point cards in the deck. But now I'm also going to multiply by 12 and 13 because we know that the whole card is not an ace. And a similar, similar um, thing with the aces, except we're back to multiplying by 1 for the for the dealer ace and 9 and divided by 13 for the fact that the whole card is not a 10 point card. So um, there's all the probabilities of each starting hand um, for player hard totals. So according to this, 67.6% .6 of the time the player will be dealing with a hard total. Okay, the soft totals um, with most of them, it's going to be 2 times 1 and 13 squared. And the reason for the 2 is because with a soft 13, for example, it, it, um, the two cards, the ace and the 2, could be in either order. So you, so you multiply by 2. And then also um, multiply by 1 and 13 for the dealer's up card. So the total probability is 2 times 1 and 13 cubed. And this is going to work all the way through the soft 20. With the soft 21, there's a greater chance of that um, because there's more 10 point cards than any one, any of the other cards. So we're going to do 2 times. Uh, 1 and 13 squared times 4 and 13. Okay, so I copied and pasted that all the way through the dealer's 9. Um, actually, I copied and pasted too far. So now let's do the 10. Um, again, in, um, we're going to change one, in, one of the 1 and 13s to a 4 and 13 and also multiply by 12 and 13 because the dealer doesn't have an ace in the hole. For a soft 13 against an ace, uh, we can keep it the same, 2 times 1 and 13 cubed, and then times 9 and 13 because it, we know the dealer doesn't have a 10 point card in the hole. Okay. probability of a player blackjack against the dealer 10 is 2 times 1 and 13 times 4 and 13 times 4 and 13 times 12 and divided by 13. Probability of a player blackjack divided by, I mean, against the dealer ace is 2 times 1 and 13 times 4 and 13 times 1 and 13 times 9 and 13. Hopefully that's right. Now let's deal with the pairs. Probability of a player pair of twos against the dealer two is 1 and 13 cubed. And we don't multiply by two because um, we're dealing with two of the same card. That's going to work all the way through the dealer nines. as well as the um, pair of aces. For a pair of tens against the dealer two, we do four and 13 squared times one and 13 for the dealer two. Copy and paste that down. Okay, now let's um, do the same thing, but for the dealer 10 up. 
that's going to be 1 and 13 squared times 4 and 13 times 12 and 13. probability of a player pair of 10s against the dealer 10 is 4 and 13 cubed times 12 and 13. All right, probability of a pair of 2s against the dealer ace is 1 and 13 cubed times 9 and 13. Probability of a player pair of 10s against the dealer ace is 4 and 13 squared times 1 and 13 times 9 and 13. Okay, there's all the probabilities. Hopefully they're right. Um, in fact, let's, let's add them up and see if they are. Okay, that adds up to 95.27%. And the part we're missing is the dealer blackjack. Um, the probability of a dealer blackjack is 2 times 4 and 13 times 1 and 13 or 4.74 percent so let's add up these and hopefully they add up to 1 they do great so there's our probability sheet next next let's um, make a sheet for the expected values I mean expected returns. The next step is going to be to create an expected return sheet which we'll call ER for short. This is going to contain the expected return of any given hand, which we've already figured out. We are just going to summarize it all in one convenient sheet, sheet in the same kind of layout as the probability sheet. So for a hard five against a two, we just need to refer to the hit stand double surrender sheet. And copy and paste that down. Same thing with the soft totals. And the pairs. But here we're, for the pairs we're going to refer to the uh, splitting sheet from the last video. Next Let's make an expected value sheet, which we'll call EV. This is going to be the probability of the expected value and the probability for any given hand. So we simply need to multiply the probability sheet, any cell on the probability sheet, by the corresponding cell in the expected return sheet and do that for every possible starting hand. And let's see what it all adds up to. Uh, a positive 1.43%. But as I've been saying all along, We've, we've been assuming the whole way that the dealer does not have a blackjack. And I just realized I made an error. In the expected return sheet for a soft 21, um, I've been treating it like an ace 5 and a 5, when actually it should be 1.5 because it's a, a blackjack. So let me copy and paste this 1.5 all the way down. That changes the expected return to 4.02 percent. But again, that's, that's once you clear the hurdle of no dealer blackjack. What's the probability of a dealer blackjack? That is 
2 times 4 and 13 times 1 and 13, and the 2 is because the 10 and the ace could be in either order. So, um, so there's also a possibility that there's a winning dealer blackjack. And uh, the probability of that is the probability of a blackjack times the probability that the player does not have a blackjack. And we're going to multiply by negative 1 because the player loses in that situation. Uh, there's also the possibility of a blackjack tie, but that um, results in a push. So that's not, so we would be adding and subtracting 0, so we don't need to bother with that. So what's the grand total? Um, let's call this no dealer blackjack. Just the sum of these two cells. And the answer is negative 48.5%. Um, um, so there you have it. That is my expected return for um, a blackjack game with infinite decks, dealer stands on a soft 17, double after a split is allowed, split only one time, surrender allowed, um, resplitting ace is not allowed. Um, that's not gonna, in, in my, if you look up these rules but under an eight deck game, you'll get 0.43%. The difference between 0.43 and 0.485 is due to that infinite deck assumption. Uh, so there you have it. The house edge um, in blackjack, assuming an infinite deck, again, just starting from nothing. Um, thank you, and hope you enjoyed it.